Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we go over Studio One's Smart Tool. Now I have an older video that goes over all of the available tools within Studio One, but I want to concentrate on the Smart Tool. I use this all the time. It's actually my primary tool inside Studio One because it has so much function and flexibility built within one tool. So instead of talking about it, let's dive into the DAW and take a look. All right, so here we are inside of our session. And when we're talking the smart tool, we first need to reference the top of our window. Up here at the top are all of the tools available to us from Studio One. So we have the listen tool like I'm hovering over right now. We have the mute tool, which it can be a handy tool, but I just use the keyboard shortcut of Shift and M to mute or unmute specific regions. But that's fine. If you use the mute tool, totally fine. But I want to concentrate on the smart tool. And the smart tool is actually this little bracket all the way on the left hand side. If I just select the range tool, which is the second one in, it's the represented by the two squares kind of overlapping. I now just have one tool at my disposal. I can come down here, I get my little plus crosshair, and I can select an area. But that's pretty much all I can do. If I try and click and drag, yes, I can now cut it and drag it around, but then I kind of can't do anything else. Maybe I need to extend this out or adjust the fade or the cross section over here. And that's cool, but I'd rather use the smart tool. So the smart tool, like we said, is this bracket all the way here on the left-hand side. When you click on this, it will link the arrow and the range tool together, but it does so much more than just that. You may have noticed when I clicked on this, you actually see an extra little blue line, and right now it's underneath of the erase tool. And we can change this if we come over to the arrow tool after we've selected the smart tool and click on it. It then gives us the option of select alternative tool, and in, in brackets you see control. I'm on PC right now. If you were on a Mac, you would see command or CMD. And what it allows us to do, maybe I just want, let's go with the split tool. I don't necessarily always use this, but I'm going with that one for now, just for example sake. So you can see our little blue line has shifted over to our split tool. So the smart tool gives us lots of options. And let's talk about all of those options. I'm going to clear my selection. When you're navigating through the top of your events, audio or MIDI or other, you get the range tool. This is the same crosshair that we saw earlier when we just had the range tool selected. And I can do the exact same things because here's my selection and now I can click and drag and move this to wherever I need to go. I'm just gonna undo that real quick. So the top half of whatever your event is gives you the range tool. Really cool. But let's go even further. If we go to the bottom half, we now change over to the arrow tool. And I'm just gonna click outside of that range that we did. And now you can see I've selected the entire event. So I can move this whole event wherever I need to with just the arrow tool. And we'll just undo that a few times just to play it safe. With the arrow tool, if I come to the left or right hand side of any event and I need to make any kind of adjustments to the length of the event or maybe make some edits, then I get this tool. It looks like a vertical line with one of either of two left or right arrows, which is essentially just the left and right trim tool. So if we click and hold on the right hand side of this event and I pull it out, I'm now extending my event further underneath this new event that's on top of it. So if I come to the end here and do the same thing, you can see I can adjust the right hand side of my event to wherever I need this edit to happen. Maybe I need to pull it back. If we undo and go to the left hand side, it's the same exact thing. After you've made a number of your edits, if you actually need to maybe adjust the breaks in your edits or your events a little more refined, you can come to any one of the splits and when you're towards the upper half or really the upper two thirds of your event, you get just the same regular region or event trim tool. But if you come down to the bottom, it now changes to a solid line with the left and right arrows both illuminated and actually drop down. And 
clicking and holding this now allows us to modify the split in our events simultaneously. So the two that are butt up next to each other, we can shift them around and you can see, you know, clearly this was a separate take, but I can go in and refine. And if I hold down shift, I can fi really fine tune where this edit is going to be. And I'm affecting two regions or two events at the same exact time. Another reason that I use this smart tool is if I have an event selected, I now get the option of adjusting my clip gain. So I can come up here to the box that's at the top center of this event, and I can click and drag up or down to adjust my event gain however I need. Now this is different from your gain envelope where you can kind of draw in a gain line onto your events. This is the overall event gain, but I, with the smart tool, I have instant access to this when I have my event selected and it goes for any event that I may be clicking through. Again, with the smart tool, if I go to any event that has a fade out or maybe I want it to have a fade out, I can come to the top corner and just kind of click and drag a quick little fade for that event, no problem. And then I can even come in and adjust the shape. Instead of it being linear like this, I can make it exponential where it kind of dips out further and then kind of settles in or kind of ramps out with a logarithmic fade towards the top. And that's just a couple of the things you can do with a smart tool on its own without touching your keyboard. Now, if we start throwing some modifiers in, things like control, things like shift, things like alt, or if you're on a Mac, command, option, and control over there as well, and shift. Now we get even more functionality from the single tool. So we're working on PC today. Maybe I wanna go in and I wanna use the Ben Marker tool that we selected before. If I just press and hold control, you can see my tool changes. It's now the Bend Marker tool. And I don't have any Bend Markers in here now, so let's go ahead and just change this to the Split tool. For example, I'm gonna press and hold control, and now I can just go through and make all kinds of slices within my audio. And then I release control and I'm right back to the smart tool. And it allows me, you can see I'm hovering over this split and now I can move that edit that I just did with the control smart tool, giving us the split tool and move this edit because I'm still using the smart tool. I don't necessarily need to do that though because what we can do is use the range tool and wherever we need to go, just double click and you'll make a slice right where your cursor is hovering. Okay, let's talk more modifiers. Now we're gonna go to the bottom half in our arrow tool. And if you didn't know this already, you can very quickly and easily duplicate events by holding down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, clicking with the arrow tool and just dragging over. So now I can have an exact copy of that first event over here and it's not a ghosted or shared copy. So everything I do here will not affect the original one. It's a duplicate. It's almost as easy as hitting D on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for duplicate, but I can put it wherever I need to because I'm already using my mouse and I'm creating that duplicate that I can shift to wherever I need it in the timeline. And let's go over one of my other favorite tools when using the smart tool is the slip edit tool. If I hold down control and alt simultaneously, you can now see I have that vertical line with the left and right arrows illuminated in the middle. And this allows me to move the audio within the event without changing the length or size of the event. So if I need to shift my audio just to kind of lock it in with everything else, I can use the slip tool and just shift it wherever I need it to go. Maybe I need it to be a little bit earlier because I was a little behind or vice versa. And you can see we can go to any event and slide the audio within the event without changing its length. That's just a few options that you can do with the smart tool. And it is why that is my preferred tool inside Studio One. When I'm working on my productions, a client or artist productions, or I'm working with any of my students, I always use the smart tool or encourage the use of the smart tool for the students because there's so much functionality and it just makes the workflow that much faster and easier because I'm not going through hitting keyboard shortcuts to shift between all of my different tools or coming up top and clicking on whichever tool I need at the moment. 
you have it everything you need in your disposal right within the smart tool. And we just talked about audio events today. You can do a ton with MIDI events as well, but there would have been a much longer video and I'm trying to reduce these videos to make them convenient for you guys. What are some of your uses for the smart tool if you use it? Or what did you learn today that makes you want to switch over to using the smart tool primarily? Let me know in the comments below. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For mixing or lesson information, check out timplansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.